So last week we spoke of, was it last week? Yeah, on Friday, we spoke of uh, double tops, double bottoms. I made some illustrations and I showed you practical examples on the live chats. So today we are going to look at that's, those ones were external range liquidity. So now we're going to look at internal range liquidity. So when we talk of internal range liquidity, these are some of the things we are looking at. We are looking at fair value gaps. We are looking at liquidity voids. And we are looking at what we call volume imbalance. I'll show you examples. Fair value gaps. Maybe you should write these things down. So we have fair value gaps. We have liquidity voids. And we have what we call volume imbalance. These are all forms of internal range liquidity. So let's look at let's look at them one by one. Uh, first of all, let's look at uh, fair value gaps. We we'll look at fair value gaps. Then we we'll look at liquidity voids, and then we we'll look at volume imbalance. Then I'll explain to you their significance and what they mean when we see them on the charts. Okay, and what price does when it goes to fill them or gets gets close to them. So let's get started. Let's start with fair value gaps. Let me see if I can do some illustrations before I show you examples on the live chat. So uh, let me do an illustration. I like doing illustrations because they look practical. Let me change the let me uh, background. Let me increase opacity. So it looks like a bearish candle. So let's say we have this. This is a wick or a shadow. That is also a wick, aka a shadow. Now, to the left of this candlestick, let's say you have something like this. Now, we are looking at this, assuming that uh, price is coming from above, like this. So, price is bearish. Okay, we don't need that. Let me use the arrow. Okay, so this candlestick, we have a wick here. Then, over here, we have a candlestick, and probably that one is bullish. So, I'll change the color something like this something like this now look at something when you look at the middle candle you realize that it's a bearish candle and you realize that there was intense selling okay so it doesn't matter what time frame you are looking at this one let's say if you saw this on a daily time frame that means on that day there was a lot of selling many more sellers in the market than buyers that is to say that the selling volume in the market was far greater than the buying volume and so the market moved down, like you see on this candlestick. Now, you have a candlestick to the right of it, to the left of it, and another one to the what? To the right of it. What's a fair value gap as far as this example is concerned? Look at this candle, the middle candle. Then look at the candle to the left. Look at the candle to the right. If you look at the candle to the left, look at the lower wick. Hmm? This is the upper wick, and this is the lower wick. Look at where the lower wick is. Now look at the candle to the right. Look at where the upper wick is. The distance or the space between this lower wick of the candle to the left and the upper wick of the candle to the right is what we refer to as the fair value gap. And this is how it looks like. This is how I draw it. I take my rectangle, then I draw from that wick, then I extend to the right. like this, something like this, okay? If the market moves from this direction, this way, and then it goes in to fill this gap, especially if it is happening at a resistance level, if it fills this gap, you are likely to see the market do this, come back down. Why? Because there was price inefficiency there and they have gone in to correct it. Sometimes the colors can be the same. The candlesticks, sometimes the colors can be the same. Sometimes they are bullish and bearish combined. Sometimes they are only bullish and other times they are only bearish. Okay. But this is how a fair value gap looks like. So is the space between the wick of the candlestick to the left and the wick of the candlestick to the right. So the market trades into it, fills it, and then it starts to go back down. 
So this is how a fair value gap looks like.